Have you ever heard of a grief surge? I'm Danielle Burnock from DanielleBurnock.com. Love yourself from Survive to Thrive, that lady on the internet who loves you. I want to talk to you today a little bit about grief, specifically a grief surge. What's a grief surge? It's something that cripples people at times, especially when they don't understand it. As I was growing up, I suffered the loss of multiple people in my life through death. There was no one there to help me with that. That just traumatized my soul because I never processed any of those emotions in a proper way or talked about them with anyone, had no help in dealing with any of that loss. And I had grief surges all the time. I had no idea what they were. It wasn't until after my mother passed away and I had help from hospice that I learned how to deal with grief in a healthy way and how to process grief. And I talk about our feelings and our emotions and trauma, but trauma and grief are not always the same thing. But both of them need to be dealt with. Because if we don't deal with our feelings, our feelings will deal with us. You've heard me say this before if you have listened to me for any time. And a grief surge is something that seemingly comes out of the blue like a tsunami wave and just reduces you to just all you know is what you feel. And if you have not given yourself the permission to feel that, you'll then you won't let it process. You won't let it have its place. We need to give it a place. I remember the first time this happened to me a number of years ago when I recognized it. I was playing a song on the piano that I had played, my mother had played, my mother used to play piano. And all of a sudden I was just overcome with so much grief and I just burst into tears and I just could not contain myself, but I learned to give that place. Because see, a grief surge is temporary. If you give it its spot, it's temporary. And I bring this up because I had one just last week. It was something I, I saw it differently, even then from that time from the piano. My husband and I were watching a movie we love the Hallmark movies. <laughs> and in this one particular movie, the girl gets a phone call. She's told that her sister had died in a car accident. Her sister and her were very close and she was just overcome with grief as you know, what happens when we learn about someone we know dies. But when I watched this, a convergence of so many emotions just flooded into my soul more than just one from many different losses and different aspects of it. And I gave myself the space. I started to cry a little bit, but then I felt it coming. I felt it coming. And I got up and I, I just walked in the other room and I, it exploded. And that's what I learned about that grief surge and why it's so bad to not let it out is that emotion that I felt was explosive. Shame was right there trying to tell me I shouldn't be crying. Other feelings that you should stop that and things from the past and societal things, many things will come against us to say, you ought not be doing what you're doing. You ought not be feeling what you're feeling. But I was feeling the loss of my brother, the loss of my dad, the loss of my mother, the lies I'd been told, all of them converging and it like blew up and I couldn't even breathe. I was crying so hard. And as I stood in the other room, letting myself let that come out. Maybe I was crying for five minutes, maybe 10. I don't know, I was not timing myself. My husband came, didn't say a word. He just stood with his hand and, and rubbed my back. Because when we're having that, we don't need anyone to fix it. We don't need anyone to say anything. We need 
to let it out. Like you let the steam out of a tea kettle. If you keep that on the top, that thing will explode. And that's why letting our feelings out is so important. I had to share this because I recognized how explosive, and I use that word on purpose, explosive, those emotions were inside of me. I had numerous ones of grief exploding inside of me. And that's why people get sick when they don't let things out. It explodes inward. You need to let it explode outward in a safe way, in a controlled way. Cry or go for a walk or a bike ride or go hit baseballs or golf balls or whatever it is, how you let that out, let it out. Because if you don't let it out, it is toxic and it will hurt your body and it will harm your life. It might come out in another way. You might take it out on someone else. It might hurt a relationship of yours. Grief surges happen. If you have been through a deep loss, it could happen at any time. You don't need to be afraid of it. It could be years. And then all of a sudden, it just gets struck. Let it out. And then you're all done. You're all done. I didn't have it the rest of the night. It was gone. It came. I let it out. And it was gone. It's like a surge. Like a surge of electricity. So if you have, I, I encourage you, I come on here all the time to encourage you to feel your feelings and deal with your feelings, deal with your trauma, deal with your grief, heal it. But it may come around to visit again. And that doesn't mean you didn't heal it. And that doesn't mean you didn't deal with it. It means you're just feeling it again. Feel it and let it pass. Because you matter. And because who we love, the people we have loved that we have lost, they matter. And say their names. Like my mom and Eleanor, Eleanor Brolis, my dad, C. Howard Brolis, and my brother, David Brolis. Those three people I lost. And my grandmother was uh, Cecilia Karras. You know, nobody knows their names much now, and it doesn't matter. But I can say their names because they mattered to me. Who have you lost? Say their name out loud. Like my friend Mary Welsh says, say it loud and say it proud because they mattered to you. And so if you go through a grief surge, let yourself, and then it will pass. And be kind to yourself, because you matter, and I love you. So till next time, I love you.